welcome back and thank you for watching desi plaza tv we are continuing our second episode with more information about hinduism face to face with dr prakash rao in the previous episode we talked about the importance of temple how it is compared to the body and importance of mantras and why and how and what is the main point that we definitely need to know about those things so let's continue our conversation with dr rao and uh, he is going to tell us about his spiritual journey uh, welcome back uh, dr rao and uh, this is really an interesting question and uh, how did you get into this you know what prompted you to uh, get into this hinduism and also how did you start your spiritual journey um, it, it's a very long story but we will try to <laughs> condense it into a few the few minutes mm -hmm. as i mentioned so we built that uh, temple I was chairman of a Hindu temple society of Mississippi mm -hmm. um, until 1990, mm -hmm. and uh, we completed that building in 1980, um, 88 actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we were planning to do Kumbhab Shekam, mm -hmm. so but uh, all the murtis were supposed to come from Tirupati, so they did not come on time. In 89, some gentleman from Baton Rouge called saying that uh, uh, there is a Swamiji from South India. His name is Ganapath Sachidananda Swamiji. Mm -hmm. Since you already completed the building, mm -hmm. so would you like to have Swamiji visit your temple? Sure. So as I said, you see, we are totally ignorant of anything and everything about our religion. Our religion that is unfortunate, but I think we are trying to change it, and hopefully we will change. So everybody has their own preconceptions about different things. Sure. So I had a lot of those things. <laughs> so when they, when he called me, said so, so a particular Swamiji is there and whether I want to invite, I said nothing doing. I don't like all these Swamiji's. I have no respect for them. All kinds of words that he used and said no. <laughs> Within a year, so we invited um, Medasani Mohan. You know, most of the Telugu people know about it, 99% know. So he is Ashtavadani, Shatavadani, Sahasravadani, so on and so on. So I invited him to Thana in 1989. He stayed at our house for um, almost 15 days. We arranged these Ashtavadanams in about 15 places. At that time, he indicated that, you see, you are somewhat religious and I see what you are doing, but you have to meet Ganapath Sachidananda Swamiji. I said, you know, you know, only last year I said nothing doing, so you say ask me to do. No, 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 you see, I mean, everybody has their own um, beliefs. Um, uh, beliefs, but uh, he is a Sakshat Devudu, uh, that means he is really a God man. You have to meet him because of uh, your interest in the religion and all that. So um, I said, okay, then, you know, um, since I have so much respect for this Medasani Mohan, I said, okay, I will, I will definitely do it. So the 1990, we were planning um, Kumabhishekam for uh, Jackson Temple. Sure. So we wanted to just go ahead and um, get all the yantras blessed. So we sent it to Mysore. Swamiji was not there. So, but anyway, so then um, we brought all the yantras that are supposed to go under the pedestals of all sure. the gods. And uh, all of a sudden, in April, that is uh, 1990, so we came to know that uh, Sri Ganapath Sachidananda Swamiji was visiting U.S. So since our friend Medasani Mohan suggested that I should meet him, then I said, okay, let me call and find out um, whether he would bless these yantras, because we always get, they are blessed by um, Kanchi, the Swamiji and all that. Uh, so I tried to call and then I found out that uh, he was coming to Baton Rouge, so I need to go and visit him and mm -hmm. take the yantras and see if he would bless. So I go there and then I w went to the place where uh, Ganapath Sachidananda was Swamiji was staying. And uh, within about 10-15 feet, so uh, he was coming from you know, from other side of the house and we just stopped the car and we are just moving going toward him. It's about 10-15 um, yards away from him. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, eye contact. Mm -hmm. He looked at my eyes and I looked at, uh, at, at my uh, He looked at my eyes. So, I mean, the whole body started just shivering. Mm -hmm. 
my head stood up i had perspiration my heart was pumping like anything my blood was um, gushing and i became numb i started sweating heavily so it could be just one minute one one second or 10 seconds we don't know at that time so you don't realize the time so once you are at that stage time has no meaning actually so it may have been only few seconds but i i feel that i did not know anything about my existence for few seconds very mesmerizing mesmerizing so all of a sudden so it happened that way and then so anyway he just stood and he smiled and said yes that i brought you mm-hmm. you follow me okay. so we go to different places and then on the way we go to somebody's house and then they were doing um paduka puja mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. so you know generally we didn't know about it i said you know why they are doing puja to this chapels kind of thing sandals i mean you know if they are interested in mm-hmm. you know believe in swami ji they should do puja to him rather than yeah. to the sandals yeah. because that is the level of understanding that i had i didn't even know mm-hmm. the sandals had that kind of uh, the uh, podkas have that kind of importance i was mm-hmm. thinking they are all chapels kind of thing <laughs> and then you know he materialized something and gave it to those people so i thought you know he is just bluffing he just put it somewhere in his hand and he was giving not i don't think he really did it uh, you see i have all the suspicions that anybody can have it mm-hmm. and then he goes to another house and that is where he was supposed to do the bhajans mm-hmm. and then so he met few minutes and we talked about our temple what we are doing and all that and then he came to a big hall like this one actually and then he set up his um, um uh instruments and all that and then he asked one of his associates to explain what is the significance of these yantras why they should be placed under the pedestal mm. so then swami ji put all those uh, yantras all mm-hmm. 17 yantras on his table mm-hmm. and then so he took one flower mm-hmm. uh, rose the flower mm-hmm. and then he started taking um, kumkum mm. a fistful of kumkum okay. and then he started putting on each of them so there are 17 okay. fistful of uh, kumkums that he put uh, took out from the uh, rose mm-hmm. and then he put it and then he gave us also we still have you know, some some mm-hmm. that uh, kumkum mm-hmm. so then so the, at that time so i realized this is not in an ordinary person kind of thing because you know there is no way you can you know have this kind of uh, negative attitude saying no these are all humbug kind of thing and all that when you see with your own eyes this this kind of miracle then so he so it blessed was just a flower nothing yes, else just only flower that's all okay. we on left hand he has flower and then he was just was uh, taking a fist full of it wow. so 17 like that okay. one and then he gave some to us okay. we still have it okay. then he blessed us and uh, we went to we went back to mississippi we did the prana pratishta the minute prana pratishta was over we started having problems mm-hmm. so i was chairman for about 6 7 years right and then i started having problems with the rest of the eight members and within 4 5 months it has come to the uh, stage where mm-hmm. i could not even take it any longer okay and then i resigned actually as a as a press chairman of the temple then since that time so i am having a lot of um, obsession about swami ji whether i am sleeping whether i am driving whether i am working whether i am doing so anything you're constantly thinking constantly about thinking about it. as if he is pushing me he is guiding me kind okay. of thing i said why the i mean we, you 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 meet so many people in life why right. this guy is doing something <laughs> like this to me and all that you know this is the thinking that we have sure. and uh, <coughs> so and then i thought you see probably i may have a mental problem i am not able to control my brain or Emotions. he may have done black magic okay. these are the two things probably in my mind <laughs> so but you know you are too proud to go to a psychiatrist and yeah. say you have mental problem and yes, all that so is. then i started reading books okay. <coughs> about anybody any book i can find okay. uh, find out whatever experience that i had when i met him mm-hmm. and then why i have this kind of obsession with him sure so i read lo- so many books <coughs> i couldn't uh, find the answer 
Finally, there is a book. It is called The Only Dance There Is. Okay. It is written by Richard Alpert. He was a Harvard University professor who was fired because he was, you know, doing some smoking about marijuana and all that at that time. Then he goes to India. He finds a guru, and guru touches him on his forehead, and then he okay. he, he he falls on the uh, floor. Then they sprinkle the water, and then 15 minutes he gets up. <coughs> then he wrote an experience. What happened when he touched his forehead? Sure. That experience and my experience exactly matched. Okay. Then he also said, when is a guru, sadguru like that one? Bless. If you, if he blessed you with this kind of experience, mm. that means they have something in mind. Correct. They are trying to see that your your body and mind and everything is cleaned mm -hmm. purified so cleansed so that's the reason they will ex they will make you to experience this mental churning and that is what then i realized at that time till that time i was trying to remove his him from my image <laughs> from my mental image all of a sudden i felt oh there is something in it otherwise Got it, it. Uh, otherwise <coughs> anyway so then I realized this is his divine wish Power. that I follow him kind of thing. The minute I realized it, I thought I, I want to see him. Till that time, I didn't want to see his face. He did not even believe he in believed his wishes. Exactly. Okay. Then yeah, it happened that he was in uh, Trinidad at that time. Okay. Within three days, we just flew to him. Sure. And then so we met him and he smiled and we had a very big, very good meeting. <laughs> and uh, so then the minute I saw him, I started crying. So that crying actually started and then continued for five years. Every time I saw Ganapha Sachdhan and Swamiji, mm -hmm. for five years, mm -hmm. I used to cry. So that cry uh, was like out of emotion? Out of, uh, uh, it's not, it, it just, just comes. comes. It, it just comes. Okay. You don't like make any, in your no, you don't even make in any effort. Sure. And my wife used to say, why you cry? Crying. I don't understand what is happening to you and all that. Maybe it's kind. out of happiness. Exa exactly, happiness. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, then he comes actually, we invited him to come to Jackson, Mississippi because mm -hmm. in 1993, he was planning to have a world tour okay. for conducting all these healing and meditation music. Okay. So we, we invited him to Jackson, Mississippi. He came in 1993 and then, so at that time, so he, he appointed me as a chairman of the Yoga Center. Okay. And at that time, he also mentioned so, do you now know why you left Hindu temple? Because <laughs> have a so there is a purpose. I purposefully created a situation for him, for you to leave the temple because I I wanted you to be part of my organization. Nobody will think anything about you, bad about you, because you have done what you are supposed to do. Now your mission is to take care of this that yoga center kind of thing. That is how our journey started and we experienced so many miracles mm -hmm. actually in our mm -hmm. life also mm -hmm. and um, then <coughs> as a chairman so we have actually Datta retreat center in Pittsburgh so usually I go to, uh, once a year kind of thing and just mm -hmm. to look at the things what is happening kind of thing mm -hmm. and then around 1996 mm -hmm. so uh, Swamiji actually built one Datta, um, Datta Temple in Baton Rouge. So I was also part of that one in the planning and construction and all that. And then in 2007, Swamiji called everybody in Baton Rouge, said that I have an interest in establishing Hanuman Temple. Okay. Okay, Hanuman Temple. So that is what I want you to undertake this particular project. And so all of a sudden, so the new project has come. So 2008, mm -hmm. so we bought this land and then we started this one. But Before now, we uh, go into the details of that, no. I wanted to also know this uh, Datta Center also has a several way of teaching Correct. like satsang Correct. to other uh, you know, devotees yes. who are interested yeah. in. So yeah. See, this is a very important thing actually at that time. <coughs> Because their communication was not as great as it was. We are talking about 19, you know, more than 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
So, our mission at that time was how do we spread Swamiji's music and bhajans because Swamiji has composed more than 7000 songs. Mm -hmm. It is all instantaneous. He never sits and writes in one place. And also about probably 30, 35 years ago, he experimented about the impact of this healing music. Since he is singing frequently and then he is using all the instruments, then one gentleman from Germany, he goes to Mysore with cancer and he asks Swamiji that I have cancer, I went to Europe all over the place but nothing has happened, can you help me? Swamiji thought about it and said, okay, let me try the music, whether the music will have any impact on him kind of thing. So he took a big veena, he took big veena and then started playing. He started playing for about 45 minutes and all of a sudden, all of a sudden this West European gentleman, so he fell unconscious and he fell on the floor mm -hmm. and then afterwards he got up and then Swamiji realized it worked. Then he said, now your cancer is gone, you go and check anywhere. So he is still alive, that gentleman, after 30, 35 years of age. Since that time, Swamiji has been propagating this healing and meditation music. He is there any place like any, you know, common man can go and, uh, you know, get those yes. bhajans in yes. the website? Yes. You see, um, um, you see hanuman.org okay. Dallas hanuman.org okay. if they go they can access all these things okay. in the same way um, Amazon you can go to Amazon mm -hmm. look for all his um, uh, CDs anywhere it is they are available okay. and uh, so they are available in our temple also anybody who is coming to Hanuman temple they can buy also Swamiji has also written almost uh, 200 books there are at least four five hundred CDs bhajans and, uh, and they're and, uh, all they're, available. They're, they're all well, available. definitely, uh, and uh, that access can be definitely, you know, like we will give you again one more time. Yeah. Um, the Hanuman uh, dot org. Yes. That, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. please do visit that and try to see yourself what Dr. Rao is talking about. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll come back in our next episode. We will explore. As we all know, Kare Siddhi Hanuman Temple is a very prominent part of this Dallas Fort Worth. Let's go explore a little bit about it and learn the importance of it. Yeah. So till then, stay tuned.